It's the National Football League on EA Sports. We'll see Baker Mayfield. He's ready to get right back to it after the bye. It's the Seahawks and the Commanders next on Madden Football. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. Today we hit week 10, and we've got a good one in store between the Washington Commanders and the Seattle Seahawks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you look at the Seahawks team as they get ready here. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Now meanwhile, for the visiting commanders, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. And I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. The shadow's starting to get a bit longer. Week 10 of the NFL season is here, and we're underway on EA Sports. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. They will be led out by the Heisman Trophy winner from 2018 from Oklahoma, Baker Mayfield. And he is hot, hot, hot. Yeah, okay, so there's a blemish in there, right? He did throw one interception last in the last yeah, game. but five touchdown passes. Okay, that's the offset you want. I say bench him. Five <laughs> touchdowns, one interception. You right? are tough, coach. <laughs> I thought the ratio was if you got to three to one, your quarterback was operating at peak efficiency. Five to one. And a win. And a win. Yeah, just let him keep throwing it. Baker going to throw this right away. That's caught over the middle by Fant. And this Washington defense, Charles, terrific in the victory a week ago. And no matter what's done throughout the ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. It sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw into the hands of Finn. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game. And you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. and really gets them amped up as they go forward. Robinson, he'll try the left side. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Pushes him over, and he is in for the Seattle touchdown. James Robinson. His fifth rushing touchdown now on the year. And the Seahawks will jump on top of the game's first score here this afternoon. Thought 
reason why when you play a runner with these talents, you've got to be able to wrap up and get him on the ground. Or the first person who gets there, hold him up long enough for the next wave to get there and get him down. Otherwise, he will continue downfield and find pay dirt. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And it's now a 7 nothing game. The kick unit for the Seahawks out there on the field. And we are ready to rock. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And no chance to get away as they get him down at about the 17-yard line. Here are the commanders for their first drive of the game. And they'll be led out by a guy who has a couple years under his belt in the NFL, their third-year quarterback. And you've got to think that they've got to be feeling pretty fresh. You know, coming off of the open week, didn't have to play, right? Gives them a chance to rest up a little bit, heal some of those aches and pains, and excited about playing again. That really rekindles things a little bit. I want to see how they come out and establish themselves here early. And that bye week coming right where they want it in the middle of the schedule. The first and ten here for Hal and the Commanders at their own 17-yard line. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. First carry of the game for Brian Robinson. And not a whole lot there. Maybe a yard in the 27. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly when the play comes to you. And sometimes you have to cover some ground to go make the plays we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might walk through one over his head as this game progresses. Give him three yards there on the first down pickup. Well, that was big right there because they're in the bottom five in the league and converting on third down. They needed that pickup in a big way. There were two things they said they wanted to win in this game. One, the turnover battle, and the second, third down conversions. So they got one there. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards there and a Washington first. Those are the types of run, Charles, that they say this first year running back can provide a lot more of in the future. He made it look easy, didn't he? Picking up that first down. Some have described him as a diamond in the rough with a lot of polish, nice little buffing. This guy could be one of the top backs going forward. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. On first and 10, it's Robinson. And a short gain down to about the 33. A minimal gain as we tick down inside of a minute remaining in the opening quarter. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. That's a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on it before he could get much out of it. Hal throwing on third down here. And that will be incomplete. They couldn't hook up on what's going to be the final play of this first quarter. After 1-7-0 on EA Sports. Washington with a football here to begin quarter number two. York able to send this one through, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So that Charles, a season long right there. And you know who's really excited about that? The special teams coordinator, because he's the one who has to tell the head coach in pregame, this is where we trust him from. This distance, he can hit it, and he repaid that trust by knocking that one right through. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Seahawks ready to take over on offense. They've got the lead right now. You remember last week they defeated the Carolina Panthers here. Good momentum. A first down throw for Mayfield. This is the tight end fan. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A 
drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Oh, there's a nice move by Robinson. And some room to work. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 57 yards rushing for him now. He's only carried the ball four times. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They juked him. 16 yards, a little deja vu from the previous play where they got 16. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What is it, three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they'll get to that end zone real fast. He finds his man complete. That's Marsh. And they're going to move it down inside the 25. So a decent gain there, but not their fourth consecutive first down like they had on the first three plays. You sound almost disappointed there. You want to fire the offensive coordinator on that one or what? <laughs> they would gotten into a rhythm. I thought they were just going to keep going. Yeah, almost a win for the defense, but if that's your win, they're not doing very well right now. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Second and short. That's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. Back to the ground with Robinson. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Mayfield to throw it. End zone caught. Touchdown, Seattle. A great play there. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Extra point by Blankenship. It's up and good. And that pushes the lead up to 11. So that drives seven plays in length. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. Fielded right around the eight. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The commander's going to retake the field for drive number two. Four and four, their record through eight games on the season. Would you say that this team has overperformed, underperformed, or are they kind of right where you thought that they would be? Do you mind if I say yes, yes, and yes? <laughs> because ultimately to me, four and four is about what... Oh, into a sea of defenders have intercepted. Picked off by Sidney Jones. And the Seahawks are going to take possession of the football. But when I looked down, he was kind of shaking his head right after he threw that pass. So what did you see? Well, from a defense's perspective, anytime you have your eyes back towards the quarterback, you're in a position to make a play on the ball, whether it's a big-time play by you or an overthrow by the quarterback. You have a much better opportunity. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And that'll hurt the average a bit, as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, that was not what you would call straight line pursuit for a middle linebacker to make this play. He's got to work his way through the clutter to get to the ball carrier on the outside, and he does exactly that. That's called avoiding the trash. And he'll get this forward only for about a yard, as that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. On third down, Mayfield. Throw left side complete. That's Marsh. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. 
A second down throw for Mayfield. He finds his man complete. It's Marsh. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. And again, it's Mayfield. Now he's, and he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. The commander's gonna use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Blankenship's kick is good. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game, and then they get a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you get the ball off, what's the first thing the coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach Turned his defense, the firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let him put some points on the board. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hand. He completes this one to Terry McLaurin. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. First down now, but the clock continues to move. First down, how to throw. And that is caught at the 10-yard line. Touchdown! Terry McLaurin, halfway to 100 now with career touchdown number 50. And the Commanders get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Extra point by York is up and good. Now that slices the lead down to 17-10. Washington kick team back out there now as they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And the Seahawks offense going to get one final possession in this first half. And with a seven-point lead, they'll likely look to take this to the locker room and not really press the issue. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. But no kneeling for them. They decided they weren't going to run out the clock. They decided to take their shot downfield, hoping to either make a connection or a pass interference call. They wanted more points to put on the board. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. All right, Brandon, thank you very much. More from you two in a minute, but first, let's take a spin around the NFL and see what's going on here in week number 10. We'll begin out west at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, and that one closing in on halftime with the Cowboys out on top. Dak Prescott lighting it up. He's got three touchdown passes. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And they've got the lead over the visiting Chicago Bears. Two touchdown passes for Matthew Stafford. Finally, let's get to Philadelphia. Check on the Eagles at home at Lincoln Financial Field. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Tampa Bay Bucks. Miles Sanders, two touchdown runs to lead the way. On now to a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Washington. And I can imagine the halftime discussions are about how can we improve the running game? They have not had success so far, and it's reflected on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, for the Seahawks, they had a little bit more success on the ground than their opponents did, and that should set them up well for the second half to come. Both these teams going through their final adjustments before heading back out of the locker room. Time for us to go back out to Lumen Field where we rejoin Brandon God. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. 
Well, from deep in the end zone, he's going to bring this out. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. <laughs> This is going to put him back with a not great field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it. And the running game is starting to pay off. A very solid gain of 27. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's got to find a way to get his head around to make the play in the football. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, Seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. And search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down, Howell. And he finds McLaurin. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 20-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable. Touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin, his 10th touchdown of the season, second of the game. And the commanders go nearly the length of the field and finish it off with six points. Extra point by York is up and good. And that will level the playing field at 17 all. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Now we'll see what this Seahawks offense has in store with their first possession of the second half. After that last touchdown we just saw, Charles, we got ourselves a brand new ball game all tied here in the third as they have their first possession of this second half. And Brandon, this drive is all about one word to me, and that's the word answer, because they're trying to answer the momentum the other offense picked up in tying the game, because not only if they score and they feel better about themselves, they'll retake the lead and maybe set the tone for the rest of the half, keeping them in the driver's seat. Robinson up the middle. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. 66 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. And that's the way to do it. Trying to decide on the vision and good footwork and add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes it's his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. That is first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. They'll run this one right with Robinson. And a good push there defensively as they stop him at the 48. Gain of just one. 
Not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Here's Mayfield. And the throw there going to be incomplete. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. Now here's Michael Dixon, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The time again to see Terry McLaurin in the Washington offense. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. Now a deep ball going to be caught here near midfield. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Up the middle they go. Means. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Looking to throw on second down. Powell. That's complete to his receiver, McClellan. A huge play there for Washington. 31 yards. And boy, CD, it's one thing to watch a great run, but when it's a great run with broken contact, it's like a cherry on top. That was a nice play. And as a former defender, I can tell you with certainty, those are the ones that have you losing sleep at night. I would not like to be in that film room on Tuesday going over that one. Just a pretty poor effort defensively. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Commanders have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. Boy, that was a quick drive. The passing game set it up, and then the running game finishes it off. And how about how few plays it was to get it done, but they threw it downfield and then pounded it into the end zone. And as a former defender, I can tell you, it hurts just a little bit more when they run it into the end zone instead of throwing it. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The pressure is on now. They're being shut out here in the second half after a decent first half offensively. And they need their best drive of the game right here. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the goal gets tough in here. And a good at 66 receiving yards now for the game, and he's got a first down. I know I spent a lot of time talking about how tight ends in a lot of cases now are pumped up wide receivers, but they're still big people. He used that frame right there to absorb a really big hit on him and held on to the ball. On first and 10, Mayfield going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And this would have been intercepted if he could have gotten the feet in. He didn't, so it's incomplete. Boy, that one really could have turned this thing upside down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. To throw Mayfield. Oh, he dropped it. 
They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it. Not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had two. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Javon Kinlaw drops him for a loss of 12, and it also brings up fourth down. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the second time. We'll call that a punt of 38 yards officially, and the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Now a handoff to start it out. Robinson to about the 40-yard line. And what do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeout in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Second down, Means. And that winds up a decent run, and it also takes us to the two-minute warning. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Third and two, here's Howell. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Here's Tressway now as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Mayfield and the offense now. Down by seven. A minute 51 on the clock. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Mayfield. Gets this to Fant, and he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Clock running, about to hit 90 seconds to go in the game. He finds his man complete. That's Marsh. Seven catches for him now in this last one. A first down. Now Mayfield. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Here's Baker. He's got his big tight end fan. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Mayfield. Catch is made by Metcalf. And they're going to have another first down here as the tap is made at Washington's 18. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Mayfield to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Marsh. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. So not quite a first and goal just yet as they come up now second and inches. Here's Mayfield. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And the Seahawks are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the rim. And it's caught. It's a touchdown with zeros on the clock. And an extra point will send us to OT. Well, there's no doubt they just seized the momentum with that one. They can go ahead and kick the extra point here and ride that home wave on into overtime. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And Carter, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. Final whistle blows, and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor. 60 minutes, just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game. And here in overtime, 
If the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. This one fielded at the five. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And everyone knows the OT rules, Charles, but pretty simple formula. They go down and get a field goal. We continue play, but if they can find the end zone on this possession, ball game over. And as meticulously as all teams plan for a game, I don't doubt for a second on that offense coordinator's play sheet, he's got some overtime plays that he wants to run. I know it sounds crazy, but they plan for everything. First and ten all the way throughout the game, second and seven, whatever. Right now, he's looking at that play sheet saying, if we get to overtime, what can we break out that they haven't seen? Now a first throw here in overtime. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's oh, check in with our referee. Jedrick Wills, former first-round pick, guilty there. Now after the holding call, here's second and 20. Back to throw, Howell. Oh, and it's intercepted! What a gigantic interception here in the first drive of overtime. And now, Charles, with where they're at in the field, I mean, they're already in field goal range to win this thing. And the head coach is just talking to the special teams coordinator right now and saying, okay, where does he want the ball positioned? Because that's all you're going to do on offense. Move it to that spot. Make sure you take care of the football. And probably third down, kick the field goal and try and win this game. Left side here taken in by Metcalf. And the Seahawks are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, we're at OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they... And this will be caught. Touchdown. They needed overtime to get it done, but put this one in the win column. So it's a win for the Seahawks here, and it was thanks in large part to the play of their quarterback CD, Baker Mayfield. Yeah, he was just on target all afternoon with three touchdown passes. They couldn't find a way to stop him, and ultimately, he guided them to victory. So for the Seahawks, it's an important win for their postseason hopes as they at least get back to four and five. And they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the Buffalo Bills next week. Meanwhile, for Washington, they are barely afloat as they fall to four and five. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to Houston.